Welcome back to the Heroic Journeys podcast with Chantel and Tamara. And we are finally finishing our series on the different parts or dimensions of ourselves. And we're at the center of the circle now, which is spirit. So mm -hmm. Chantel, when you think of spirit, how would you define that? Or what does that mean to you? Um, well, I was reading a book by Tyler Henry, the famous young medium, <laughs> the other day. And I loved his answer when someone asked him about God um, because he was also raised in a religious background, but he's very spiritual, such as myself. Um, so he said that we are part of the creative force that interconnects us all. And to me, that is the definition of spirit. Mm. Yeah. What's your definition? Well, I was at a concert last night with Bruce Coburn and... Um, you know, it's an amazing experience to be in the room with an artist who has a connection to spirit. And he has an album coming out in May. This is brand new off the press. And so he sang a song from his album and I wrote down some lyrics because to me this was, it completely captured. Um, just the first verse in the chorus, Manhattan or Dakar makes no difference where you are. It doesn't matter what you think or if you smoke or if you drink. You're a thread upon the loom when the spirit walks in the room. Mm. And to me, that was like just totally, spirit is what connects me to everyone and everything in the whole community of life. You know, if my soul makes me most who I am, if my soul is my essence and takes me deepest into who I am, spirit is what makes me most expansive and connects me into the oneness of everything. And on the level of spirit, I'm one with everyone. I'm one with everything. Uh, it's hard when we're, you know, in, in our separate bags of skin with our own egos to always uh, be in tune with that uh, largeness of things. And maybe we couldn't function properly if we were always in that space of cosmic consciousness. I like but the metaphor of, of the body, right? About each person like being a cell in the body, right? And so spirit is like all there is, the entire mm. body. And, and we are part of that. Yeah. And I think like to me, being connected with spirit, when someone is connected with spirit, uh, that's what makes us rise up into our greatness. It, it's what helps us give expression to the highest version of who we can be. And, uh, and so having a practice that connects to spirit to me always kind of elevates us from being trapped in our little ego awareness and what's good for me and what do I want. I think that's my biggest problem actually with the whole law of attraction thing is this idea, you know, this is the whole rage in the spiritual communities around manifestation and and when I listen to people so often, it's about, oh, I want, I want, I want, I want. Gimme, gimme, gimme. This is what, you know. Um, and to me, the manifestation comes out of connection with spirit. And what is the highest version of what I want to be so that I can contribute? If we're having a heroic journey, Joseph Campbell tells us the ultimate goal of a heroic journey is to bring back that treasure that we share with the wider community for everyone's good. So, yeah, Sonia Choquette talks about, um, she said, my spirit is available for solutions. I don't need to know how, I don't need to, you know, to know all the details because like, yeah, what we want, what we desire, like you were writing in your book about like your goals and stuff and how you worded it. How do you word that again from William White Cloud? Oh, um, basically about like the highest possible I choose to live yeah out of uh, my soul's true nature and purpose yeah yeah I mean that's that's what William White Cloud recommends as one of the two goals that all of us are it, creative choices mm -hmm. that we all want to have at all times mm -hmm. because we are I mean if the understanding is that we are here to be on a heroic journey then we want to keep in mind the the ultimate purpose which is we have a quest here whether we're consciously aware of it or not and thinking about like you know we're both mothers we have children and very early on like even when they're babies you see the differences in their spirit what excites their spirit 
you know, we hear stories of the past of parents who, you know, well, my doctor, my, my dad before me was a doctor, I'm a doctor, you will yeah. also be a doctor versus, um, you know, nourishing a child growing up, you know, according to what excites their spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We talk about spirited, somebody being a spirited person, you know, even when a some spirited horse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that is just that life force. And that, um, to me, spirit is the breath of of the divine in you or the breath of, I mean, and even in Genesis, right? What happens? Humans are just a, this lump of clay until God breathes into them. And so, and, and it's interesting that if you look at different spiritual traditions, the word for spirit always has something to do with breath. Mm -hmm. And in English, the words inspire, um, aspire, um, respiration, they all have that spear, spirit, that root word in them. Mm -hmm. So if we have that breath of the divine flowing through us, you know, we all have access to the inspiration and um, it can right, raise us up to the highest version of who we're here to be. Yeah, Sonia Choquette is the person that I think of when I think about spirit because she's taught me the most about it. And she says in most religions, the word they have for spirit has the sound in it, mm. like aloha, you know, oh, yeah. or um, hallelujah, or I mean, I could go on and on. But when you take a deep breath, you say ha on the out breath. And I feel like it really calls your spirit back into your body when you list the things you mm -hmm. love and when you take a deep breath. I think that's the reason why uh, every spiritual tradition has some form of meditation that always starts with breathing, mm -hmm. connecting with your breath. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sonia Choquette had us naming our spirit. <laughs> and I remember thinking about what would I name my spirit, you know, if my spirit had a name. And I... I came up with the name delight like uh -huh. d and then light <laughs> but it's such a fun idea to think about um those kinds of ideas and you know she also talks about like the ego being the barking dog and you know <laughs> and that it's unguidable but when we're connected to our spirit we're very guidable and we're connected yeah. to answers but when we're in our ego mind we're not connected to answers quite so much well, that brings up the importance of having a spiritual practice because for me, the metaphor that I find really helpful, and I'm a flute player, so this totally speaks to me, but if I'm the flute and the breath of the divine, the breath of God is playing through me, I want to be a clear channel so that the music is the most beautiful, inspiring music that I could create with my life. And so um, getting out of my own way, unblocking the channel means having some kind of a practice that connects me daily with that larger breath. Um, so meditation definitely is a practice. I've been thinking a lot about getting a tattoo recently that says Spark Joy mm. from Marie Kondo. And she talks about everything having a spirit. You know, she get, comes into people's houses to help them uh, de-junk their home. And she, you know, starts off with like kind of greeting the home. And each article of clothing that they want to de-junk, she, she has them, you know, say thank you to the article of clothing yeah. and fold it respectfully. And yeah, like in her mind, like, you know, all animals and things and plants and everything has a spirit. And when mm. you think about it, everything does have an essence to it. It, it makes you feel a certain way. And so when we move through life saying to ourselves, does this spark joy or what sparks joy for me? You know, we're, we're looking to what excites our spirit and that's really our path. Yeah. I feel like we get off the path on our journey when we are not doing what excites our spirit or not moving towards what excites our spirit. And that's a practice of gratitude, mm. which is also mm -hmm. one of those universal things that, you know, every tradition offers some kind of a practice of gratitude which is so elevating to the spirit because you're focusing not on what drags you down but you're focusing on what gives you life and what gives you joy and also you know if I think of uh, highly spiritual people like the Dalai Lama or even Wayne Dyer um, people who laugh a lot you know the joy is is coming like a fountain it's just kind of pouring out of bubbling them bubbling over <laughs> in laughter yeah 
And I heard recently um, a spiritual speaker say one of the easiest ways to kind of raise your vibration, if you want to use that language, is laughter. Find something to laugh at. We get so heavy, you know, mm -hmm. there's just like life. It's like tar that sticks on us, all of these responsibilities. And if you're listening to the news and, you know, <laughs> we recommend you don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, every anxiety producing story, anything that uh, gets your dander up and makes you um, offended about what's going on in the world or whatever, think of that as tar that's sticking on you. And how can you find ways to just be uh, connect with joy and laughter and wash some of that off. Take a, a merry heart is like a medicine. You know, cancer patients are told to watch comedies. Am I right? <laughs> like it's just, it's healing. Can't hurt. It can never hurt to laugh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and when you spend time around little kids, like they're just so present and so honest mm. and so delightful a lot of the time that you just yeah. like you yeah. feel uplifted just being around them yeah i work as an educator and spend a lot of my time with the upper end of things in uh you know probably about grade 7 to 12 kind of thing and anytime i end up in an earlier's classroom it is such uh almost a shock to me how open the children are they just want you to come over and they want to share with you what, what they're doing and just the, the unbridled joy. Their, their defenses are completely down and there's that innocence. And it's contagious and they love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spirit animals. When I think about, we were talking about, you know, spirit is what connects you to everything. And I think spirit is what makes possible the connection with a spirit animal because on the level of spirit, you're one with everything. So an animal can create that resonance where you're needing something and the right animal shows up in your environment or your dreams and has something to offer you. Mm -hmm. Nature, um, if you go for a walk and what grabs your attention on the level of spirit, that is nature mirroring to you something that you need to know to move you forward on your heroic journey. And so that confidence, you know, the universe is constantly conversing with you through nature, through music and art, through synchronicities, those little signs and nods and breadcrumbs from the universe, because on the level of spirit, you can trust that you are in a constantly, um, an ongoing conversation at all times with spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I moved through um, leaving religion, I went through a very agnostic, almost atheist phase. And when my brother and sister died, I became very spiritual because all of these signs and synchronicities from spirit, you know, all of these things that only them and I knew were just popping into my reality left mm -hmm. and right. It was, you know, showing me that they're there, that they care, that they understand. Um, I was watching Tyler Henry's show on Netflix and reading his book. And he says the lessons he's learned from the other side, from the people who have passed on, they they bring through messages of gratitude, of forgiveness. They bring through very much of a victim versus student um, mind shift. So when they were going through their life, they were a victim a lot of the time. But now with the ego gone, the ego piece gone, they see like that we're a student or you know like we're the hero right yeah and so i just found it incredibly healing and validating to hear all of those stories and and to have my own personal experience with signs synchronicities from mm. spirit yeah yeah i've had similar experiences at different points in my life and especially if i think back to you know turning 40 and going on a spiritual retreat and figuring out what do i want to do with the rest of my life and then there was a whole series of, you know, the name Edgar Casey came up in different ways in my environment, which led to me doing a master's in transpersonal studies and uh, really opening up my world in so many different ways. Um, yeah, like it's just when you, um, I think when you connect with spirit, you sort of rise up. It's almost like being in a hot air balloon and all of a sudden you have a new wider version to me, the Hero's Journey framework does that. It's a it's a map for connecting to spirit. 
that all of a sudden you see the landscape of your life from a higher viewpoint and all those things that you thought were the universe is being unfair to me, I'm being punished, I'm, in my words, I've often felt like the hated child of the universe. And then all of a sudden I can see a wider view and realize Oh, it's just a it's just a test on my hero journey and if I can rise up to it all of a sudden I can level up hmm. I love also angel numbers like where you have three or four numbers in a row that are the same and to me that is a message from spirit all the time you know that I'm supported and guided and loved and like I repeat that mantra to myself anytime I see angel numbers and uh I've yeah. had that with song lyrics. <laughs> okay, That's often yeah. how the universe speaks to me. And oh, I, re I remember sure. <laughs> there was a time when uh, Joel and I really needed to get our family out of Southern Manitoba. And um, we started dreaming about where we wanted to live. And, you know, we were making plans and the process was moving forward. And the song that kept coming up was uh, Eddie Money, um, Two Tickets to Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> And so every time I heard that song and it would be in the supermarket or it would come on when I was driving and it was just uncanny. And I, you know, since that time, I rarely ever hear that song, but it was like, you know, in close succession, it, it showed up numerous times and it was like, yeah, the universe was saying, you're on your way, just be patient. That's so beautiful. Yeah, songs definitely came through too. Um, like after my sister and brother died and they were just so personal and so meaningful and I remember writing them down and thinking no one else is really gonna get this it's just between the two of us and that's okay <laughs> so in terms of practices what are your favorite ways mm. to make that connection with spirit well to call my spirit back into my body with taking a deep breath and by listing the things I love <laughs> and by doing the things I love by dancing I think that's one of my big things mm. <laughs> and I feel the music and I dance it's just I, I feel alive and I feel like like creating music like it just really brings the creator part mm. of me to life when I connect with spirit and my Beautiful. spirit my spirit is all is all about that it's all, it's all about delight <laughs> delight yeah I love that word delight uh, for me um, I, I have a morning meditation practice. I work a lot with tarot and so the, the images and the archetypes in the tarot deck really speak to me and they really, um, I guess, surface things out of my subconscious that, that really help me um, think on a, on a higher level. And writing, often journaling, like that kind of inspired um, if you want to call it automatic writing or at different points in my life, especially when I've been struggling with uh, significant depression or to have a journaling practice, which is like a conversation where I might ask a question and then write down what comes to me. And, you know, my ego will tell me you're just making it up. This is wishful thinking, whatever. And I've gone back years later and said, no, there was something more going on mm -hmm. that was uh, inspired. And so sometimes we have to just trust and not give way to the conditioning that we're just a body with a brain. We're actually plugged into something wiser, higher. Mm -hmm. And listening to music, I think music often will elevate me and, and just speak to me on the level of spirit or playing music. Yeah, it makes you very, very present and feeling very, very connected. Yeah, so I feel like I've said everything that comes to mind when I think about spirit. How about you? <laughs> I think so. I think, I mean, it's just that ongoing conversation we have with whatever it is beyond us. Um, Joseph Campbell tells us that a hero is someone who is connected to something or believes in something larger than themselves. Whatever you want to call that, we're calling it spirit, but that life force, that 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 source that we're all plugged into. So yeah, till next time, find your spirit <laughs> and remember you're the hero of your own journey.